I had children like that. And they didn't drive my car again, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, that's your attitude. Fine. It is my car. That means that you don't get to use it at all. Well, welcome to the dork table, Miss Mary. This is oh, me. Hey. Yeah, it's me, Flash. Didn't recognize me in my new voice, did you? Hmm? Yeah, no, I didn't. Hey. This is me, Grams, and I'm on a tear. And part of that reason that I'm on a tear <laughs> is because, <laughs> let me find it. Let me find it. It's over on yeah. Twitter. Well, oh, I know I got a show it. to Some introduce. Some gal. Well. I know we got a, oh. a show to do. Okay. But <clears throat> Lori Garrett posted on Twitter, attention, while you were sleeping, Trump issued an edict that eliminates job protections for tens of thousands, maybe millions of federal employees, all involved in policy making, it paves the way for mass firing of government employees. And when I shared it, it was like, you say that like it's a bad thing. Basically, what he's doing is, you know, at least from what I got from when I read into this a little bit more is, well, you no longer have the protections that the private sector does not enjoy. So, if you do a shitty job as a government employee, you can now be fired. Oh, hey, what a novel idea. Someone can be fired for doing a shitty job. I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, you'd be amazed how many people out there have a problem with, what? What? What do you mean you can fire me? I was just looking at porn on the internet on the on the clock the fuck i've been doing it for 20 years so you know that's that's where my mindset came in it's like Ugh. see what happens when she jumps the bungee cords in the tape now this is flash at the dork table on the uh, 24th of october 2020 hey grim say hey, hey to grim. the say hi hey to the bots and the, the Bitches and the, the bots bodies and the, bodies. And the bastards and yeah you know, the the four Bs. Well, seeing as how I got my my ice chat that loaded B word. on this computer. Yeah, but did you see how that flows? Because we have yeah, a B in really all those good. words. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. It's yeah. like you got linoleum or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, oh. Elmer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, I just want a pound of whatever you're smoking is what I want. Uh, I'm not smoking anything. Barman! Barman! See? See, barman? I'm not smoking anything. Squirrel! I like it naturally. Ah, oh, natural. Ah. In any case, to all the bots and bodies, hey, barman, bots the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle! Beetle! Hey, Beetle, how are you? And only 20% is COVID. What the hell? Oh, okay. Yeah. 20%. COVID. COVID. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah, we'll get okay. to the hoax eventually. Yeah, let's say hello to the bunch yeah, of the body. I'm still, I know. I'm working my way down. Guys. Yeah, but you're reading and chat. And some of it itches. Yeah, you're and reading. that's why we have head and shoulders. Hi, Cowboy Tech. And he is head and shoulders above chat the rest reader. of us. Chat reader. And do you know why he's head and shoulders above the rest of us? Because he's, he's a, got a cowboy hat. Yeah. And he's, he's taller. A, uh, and he's sitting on a horse. And he's sitting on a horse. Or in a truck. Or in a or or in a truck. Either way, you're See? taller, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there. Well, it's not hard to be taller than me anyway, but you know what the hell. The truck. Or you, helps. for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I use the truck for. Ah. Okay. In any case, we also got Grimner, the Grimner! RLM God. Okay. Don't you know? Hello, Grim. And the lovely Miss Moose Coil. Moose and they had the free girl. throw ball last night, and I yep. was in bed way before it started. Oh. So hard. Mm. I was up after it was over, caught the replay. Ah. Yeah, I can't. I can't stay up those kind of uh, early hours. It's too much. Well, sometimes in the summertime, because it's twenty hours of daylight, it's weird. Throws your body off schedule. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Messes with the internal clock mechanism. Fucking fun but. times. Add some mushrooms to that. Telling you good times in Denmark, people. Woo-woo! <laughs> Woo-woo! <laughs> 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 
Oh, well, we also got the lovely Miss Kate from the great state of Florida, (laughs) where I saw that they must be having some kind of pandemic thing going on, and I did not get the memo or an invite. What the hell? What the hell? Oh, well, I'll whine about it later. You poor thing. I know. I'm so pathetic, so sad. Couldn't even get invited to a pandemic. I know. You know, life sucks when Leave you can't you get invited to a pandemic. Wow. So you're the kid with the pork chop tied around their neck, huh? I, I feel like Cinderella over there by the just, by the stove. The most not allowed most, to go anywhere. My best friend is a mouse. The most deadly Who virus kind of in the history of mankind. And I haven't been sick. I got sick from uh, eating vegetables one day. Had nothing to do with uh, being a COVID old guy. But took some of those seeds and patched it me up real quick. Actually, I had an issue with, I kind of sort of overdosed myself on, on uh, iodine. And that, that was my problem that I had. I haven't been sick with the COVID yet. The COVID. The COVID. The COVID. Oh, well. The COVID. Uh, I also see Anti is in the chitty chat as well as Chalsa Denise. Got the O clean out of there. Uh-oh. We also have a no Psycholo. Hello, Hello honey. And Chloe and Chloe E. So double dipping on the Chloe going on today. Flasher's here. Hey, Flash. Hello. Yeah. There's two of us. Ah, Gary. hello, Grant. I know. Mm-hmm. We got a J Dread. Hey Hansel, Hansel, how you doing, Hansel? I He's really do enjoy strudel. Hansel. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but Hansel I do. I enjoy Hansel. He's making the strudel in the kitchen. <laughs> He's so very interesting. <laughs> Polishing his boots. <laughs> <laughs> so, I also, you never know when you're going to be standing next to somebody in the royal family, and you need that. Ooh. Pretty shine on your boots. Ah. <laughs> hmm, a spit shine. Mm. Could be interesting. Oh well. <laughs> wow. You're just wrong. That's all there is. To getting it. somebody, but getting somebody to do that to a shoe, that's control. I mean, oh, wow. I know, that is kind of freaky deaky. Can you see their boss? Hey, watch watch what I can make this idiot do. Shine your shoes. <laughs> oh, look. Watch what I can make him do. Spit on those shoes it's before like, you shine them. <laughs> like trading the seal. <laughs> the visual. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Help, help. Okay. Moving along. Hi, JJ's nine 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 JJ's over there in Hey JJ. I hope the wind ain't blowing as bad or as cold as it is out here in Grammy Land because it's freaking cold and breezy out here. If I had a skirt Ooh. on, I would have frozen bits. Whoa! I also see Meister Brows here. Did you know I had this epiphany last night? Of course while not. While I was talking with Wayne. Yeah. Okay. No, and, I wasn't you know, there, I was, Mary. I was well, here. I was well. Okay. I was getting ready to go and have a bath after supper. I see. Don't know. I, I don't said, see. You need to go to the. Well, I know. But I said, you need to go to the bathroom before I get in there. And he says, no, I can go outside. And then he went, wait a minute. No, it's cold and windy out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was sitting there laughing at him. And I went, you know, that's one of those differences between men and women is that men go all turtle when it's cold outside, and women do the turkey pop-up timer impersonation so you know we we reverse positions it's like because women are innies and boys are outies and except for when you go outside and then boys are innies and girls are outies it's kind of fun but yeah that's where my mind goes wow sorry i just traumatized y'all for life well, i also see meister brower is here hey woody i'm never going to be the same again i guarantee you that i know you're not but isn't that isn't that weird that the weird things about human anatomy oh I yeah prince is here hey prince weird not the purple things. one the no one fingerprints prince. yeah dun, those dun, two. Dun, dun, dun. rob boykes is also here the rob did you bubbler. The bubbler where's the bubbler rob i don't see a bubbler in his basement 
tiny bubbles. Is he <laughs> down there with Joe? What are you doing to Joe? Uh-oh. Please make sure he doesn't come back upstairs. Please. <laughs> Except that would probably put Shrillery in the running, and oh, dear God, talk about hacking. I'll spit shine her shoes, all right. Wow. Help, <laughs> what have we done to you, Mary? Are you okay? <laughs> Damn. I'll, I'll live. <laughs> Two Much weeks? to the chagrin of a few other people. But oh, okay. I, I see Trust No One is also in the chat, as wow. well as Vanna White, the lovely letter turner bot of the RLM channel. <sighs> Closely followed by Weather Dork, who has given me the cold shoulder, damn it. Weather Dork. Um, oh, hey, Trust, <laughs> Trust just said Utah is at 104% occupancy. Wow. Frickin' overachievers out there in Utah. That's all I got to say. That's like having 117% voter turnout. Okay. <sighs> that, too. Hey, Phantom. It's the Phantom. It's the Phantom. Help, help, I help. Help, and a CC66 <laughs> coming your way, as well as a Cyborgian Noodle. May you be Cyborg touched by Cyborgian noodle. Noodliness of it all. I'm just Thank a wee you. bit touched today. You, a little bit. you haven't noticed. You're Part spinning of, faster than I'm, usual. Wow. I know. I'm running faster than an eight-day clock. Wow. I yeah, I know. I'm getting burnt. By the wind. <laughs> I hope your insurance will cover this, Miss Mary. You'll be hearing from my Jew lawyers in the morning, I assure you of this. I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> today. <laughs> Moving along. Okay. Moving and along. Siv is also here as well as Kiss. Don't be kissing. Don't be kissing. Oh, Grimmy wants to know who's touching Grammy. Nobody's touching me, and that's why I'm cold. Kiss it. Damn it. Very cold in the... Wrapped around me. I'm so oh, cold. She's going to cut glass with those things, people. I know. I know. I could cut diamonds. Ouch. I diamonds. <laughs> Talk about your I overachieving, also... little <laughs> Missy. Wow. I also see Matt WJ2002 is here, hey, as well as Pom 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 and a Smartaz, who has been extremely Smartaziness. Yeah, Rob, Rob's got him back trying to learn how to make jokes. Oh, well, he's doing really good. I know, Grim. I I know I said I was touched. I was touched by the spirit. I was touched by the spirit. Don't you know they say the room gets really cold when spirits come in because they're sucking all the energy out? Wow. Maybe I need some spirits. Maybe that's what I need. Yeah, this is a natural high, folks. Wow. Can you imagine if I was on alcohol or some other recreational activity? Activity. Kind of stuff? Nah, see, weed just slows you down. Don't get all don't get all happy about the weed. People just oh, ex- sure. Nah, it's the truth about it. weed is boring. Weed puts me to sleep. Actually. See, yeah, weed. Yeah. Uh, if you add shit to your weed, then it makes it exciting. But pot by itself is just like I don't know. Doesn't really do nothing. Doesn't make you want to trip and never leave the park. Exactly. You don't even want to get up to go get the bag of chips. You want the chips to levitate and come to you. So you could sit there for like 45 minutes trying to make them do it. (laughs) Oh, that really sounds kind of cool, actually. Depends on what kind of shit you smoke, I suppose. Levitating chips. Why not? I want to levitate. Oh, come on. Have you never been too lazy to fish? Have I never been too lazy to pick up chips? Oh, dear. No, that's not what I said. You know what I said. I know. And today, on the dork table, I have named... I'm not done yet. You're not? <laughs> I thought you were done. No, we still got the holiest wow. Roger ever. And the Ooh. lovely Miss Valerie Kell has Valerie shown up. Kell. Hey, Miss Valerie. Ooh, okay. I'm a little low on the volume. See, I that's what I told volume. you. Tried you know, that's to tell you that before the show. All the time. Tweaking the knobs. Yeah, but on the replay, I told you I was listening to a show, the show we did last week, and your voice was quieter than mine, little missy, so. Hmm. And see, that's just, it's amazing, it's amazing that my voice is quiet. <laughs> uh, no kidding. There's a first time. I know. And today I named our epic Dork Table podcast, They Have Us Surrounded. And in parentheses, 
those poor bastards. I know. Hey, have you ever stopped to realize that when they have us surrounded like that, yeah. that means no matter where we shoot, yeah, we got them. exactly. So it doesn't matter. There's no reason to be. You're not worrying about safety at this point. Now it's only about survival. Survival See, of and the And I fittest. could do my Wonder Woman thing. Uh-oh. What? Because it is close to Halloween. Wait a minute. Here we well, go. Well, don't you remember? <laughs> Wonder Woman would spin really fast and then yeah. magically turn into Wonder Woman instead of Linda Carter. And so <sighs> if I spin really, really fast with like a rubber band gun, because I like shooting those, because then I can go gather up my rubber bands and <laughs> shoot again. But... In any case, if I do that, then I'll hit something eventually. Well, that's not my biggest problem in the world right oh, now. Oh, okay. No, the, the Danes sold out on me. I, yeah, I heard about that. I think the queen knows I'm here, and she said, hey, you know what? I'll piss that American prick off. Let's, let's make them wear masks for two solid months up there in the no, where nobody even goes. That's what we'll do. Well, according to Creepy Joe, we're coming into a dark winter. <laughs> it's going to be cold and dark. And yeah, cold. It's going to be plenty warm where Creepy Joe's going to be going. Ah, for you religion uh, matters out it? there in Radio Land. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. think you know. I don't think that the, the hardcore forty that pick up the dark table. I don't think they're religion matters. I would I would just venture to guess they're not even Jews. Yeah. They probably really? look yeah, well, I have adopted other people's uh verbal explanation of uh religion. And I've come to terms with that to me it seems like a mental illness. When you're that devoted to something that's just a thought. Wow, baby. <laughs> Ooh, I want a pound of whatever you're smoking at night, and you're not even smoking at night. So, think about that. <laughs> That's some control. Yeah. I mean, even a pothead can say no to stuff, but a religion utter, no. Well. God told me to do it. I have to do it. What? How do you say no to God and his plan and stuff? <laughs> How do I say no to God? <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm mocking. Sorry, Mary. I am mocking some of the religion utter encouragements I've heard over the years without giving them any real credit. Specifically, I was being vague about it. You know, See, and I thought maybe this was like how I spent my summer vacation kind of thing. How do I say no to God by Grammy Mary? Um, <laughs> I say no. <laughs> well, if it's his plan, what difference does it make what you say? It's, it's all a bunch of nonsense, please. He gives you free will, but you better not use it because the, the Admiralty Court will cook you. What? Huh? Okay. Well, <clears throat> never mind. If it's his plan, yeah. I just got to say, yeah. best laid plans of mice and gods. This might okay, be the... Tell you what. What? There's times when, when you can have the best plan ever. Yeah. And, you know, like building a better mousetrap. And then next thing you know, here comes another mouse that outsmarts it. Mm. And and like with with God and stuff, sometimes, you know, when you build those village idiots, you got to remember that sometimes those village idiots can fuck shit up worse than you ever even thought of. So... That's all I'm saying is, you know, you can have a plan all you want. And that's that's all well and good. And you can stick to that plan. But somewhere, somebody's hmm. going to let loose the village idiot, and they're going to fuck shit up. Hmm. So, well, okay. that's why they have the mask safety classes globally for that oh, yeah, very, right. yeah, for that reason. That way you don't kill yourself with applying your mask. First first rule is don't strangle yourself applying your mask to yourself or somebody else. <laughs> Stay away from doorknobs because doorknobs <laughs> tend to jump out and hang people. Well, see, I'm really irritated because the illness that's going to come two months after they 
stop the bullshit about you have to wear the fucking things. It's going to be way worse than if they didn't do this. Well, hmm. yeah. Oh, there's a lot of old people around here. I mean, older than me, old people. So, hmm. And there, and I, and the numbers raise goes up every day when I go out. Grocery stores next week is going to be mandatory. So, no, I ain't going to do it. Ah. Uh, what? Yeah. No, they oh, deliver. He said he used to have the company idiot test his software because they'd always find a way to break it. <laughs> so they're perfect at debugging purposes. And yes, Grim, there are lots of people out there that are perfect at debugging purposes. And so, you know, you can think you thought of everything until you let an idiot, idiot loose. And then it's like, huh, didn't think of that. But then again, you have to be an idiot. Hey, wait, like wait a minute. Are you guys punking me while I'm doing a dork table? <laughs> Probably. Hey, do you know something out about all these COVID rules, something that I learned earlier today? No. Did you know that the facial recognition software, um, if people are closer than five feet together, it's hard for it to actually um, walk in on someone and, yeah. and calibrate and all that fun stuff? Hence, six-foot uh -huh. distancing. Yeah software. Yes, I, I did. didn't realize it was actually five feet. Oh, I did. I knew. I knew it was six. Well, I didn't know that the software so needed to have like a five foot buffer zone. Yeah, we'll find out. It was actually five, but I knew that was the problem. The cameras couldn't focus. They need that space for them to do their thing. And if you wear a mask, it's all still good because they. They go by yeah, the eyes yeah, anyway. Yeah. But if you wear glasses and a mask, uh, even just regular old glasses and a mask, no, they make you take them. No, good... no, no, no. They make them take you off, take off your glasses when you take uh, state pictures. Because when I did oh, mine, I know. so it doesn't matter because the state picture is going to have you without it, and the camera, the the software is designed so that they can figure out who's under the glasses. It's a camera trick. Well, what? I think they're full of shite. Probably are, but just like fingerprints, you sell enough people this idea, and they go, oh, sounds good to me, hang them. People love their punishment, Miss Mary. Fuck. Do they I love it. I mean, crying out loud, there's like 50 movies about Ted fucking Bundy, right? But, like, no movies about the women he killed. What? You know, all these all all these years of all these people that you know terrible murderers and all this and that, never a film about one of the victims. It's always about the killer. Hmm. So put me on my about quest. The creepy guy. Well, yeah, yeah see whatever the, the state media wants me to pay attention to is usually misdirection. Or it's partially true but not totally true. And then when you find out in you know, like the last twenty years, about all this really bizarre shit. These rich people and you know, religious nut jobs, politicians. You know those people. <coughs> what they yeah. do with what you know, like <coughs> stuff we don't talk about, so we don't get kicked off the uh, internet. <laughs> know what I mean? Uh, huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. huh? They're not sticking pencils in the little Johnny. Let me tell you that. So yeah, yeah. Lead poisoning has taken on a whole new meaning. Yeah, well, it's a different kind of lead. Ah. Anyway, uh, well, we've got all, so what I'm getting at is we got all this weirdo shit it all came to the surface. Everybody talks about it like it's cool, and uh, nothing changes. They're gonna fucking two weeks from now they're gonna go vote for one of these complete dickheads to continue the game. Instead of, hey, let's stop this crap before somebody really gets hurt. Now, let's continue it for at least four more years. <laughs> it's like, remember when I complained about that ball game and you said I was insane? Two million people gathered and all they could do is go, well, we didn't kill each other. Uh, yeah, that's why you gathered. Yeah. 
piece of work, I'm telling you. That's why, you know what I did Monday? What'd you do Monday? Are you, you promise me you won't laugh, because you, I know you're going to find it funny, but I'm serious. I can't promise. <sighs> okay, i tell you anyway. Ready for this? Are you sitting down? Okay, tell me. I quit the human race. Really? Yep, Monday. So you finally desi- decided to uh, embrace your gnomeness, huh? Well, you know, the really disappointing part about quitting the human race was? What's that? Nobody gave a shit. They didn't go, hey, we miss you. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> Not the, it's like, what? <laughs> you quit? What? <laughs> are, are, you, are you okay? Did you take your pills? <laughs> Not a, wow, I wish you'd change your mind or none, none of that shit. Just nothing. So it proves my point about the human race and how cold it truly is, because it didn't even miss me after I left it. Well, when you stop and think about it with logistics and everything, yeah, you know, <clears throat> um, there's like 7 billion people. <laughs> Are you really going to notice when Flash says, fuck it, <laughs> done? <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I wrote it on the on the chat screen. <laughs> I okay. announced it to the there's, four people in the room that morning. There's 32 people now. Granted, it will the news will spread exponentially, but it will still take time yeah. to contact all seven billion people. Yeah, but so, I mean, it's been like six days, and even my wife didn't say nothing to me about it. It's like, why well, bother? That's because she knew way before you quit. That. Okay, she she was expecting uh, them to ex- to demand my resignation. <laughs> well, you can't you know, quit. We're gonna fire you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> One of those kind of deals. Anyway, you know that. Jimmy said you didn't quit the human race. You were kicked out. I wish. You know that's why I do the other show with Larry and Rob on Thursday. So, what? Yeah, it's exactly why because they're fun. They're not fun. They're more like smart. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of balances. They are smart guys on ice. That's yeah, for darn sure. and, and this balances out my you know my egghead role with Larry and, and Rob. There's lots of stuff, man. They they know some shit. These two guys. Oh, Rob corrected me on the math. Uh-oh. 32 minus 5 bots minus 3 Karens minus 1 Trump Tart equals 23 actual, actual bodies. Actual bodies. Oh, very good. So, see, it's going to take a little bit longer for the news to get to the, the rest of the 7 billion inhabitants of the planet. Yeah, but see, that's what I mean is I don't think they give a shit. If it mattered, immediately a shockwave would have been sent. My vibration would have just took them all. But I obviously didn't vibrate. Enough to get any interest. Oh, and Grimmy said 23 minus Flash because you quit. <laughs> yeah. 22. Hey, 22. Let's do that. What's that numerology shit? It's a double that's, number. 22. That's my birthday. Yeah, the 22. Maybe I'll do that. I think I'll look up. Um, I don't know, Beetle. We're, we're just having giggle time. I'm going to look up radio. numerology 22. Because the world is kind of fun if you let it be fun but you know we've got all these politicians trying to fuck it up so it won't be no fun okay you're sounding really weird i am well that's i I don't say that to you and i don't know if it's my well you're i hope you're oh and two plus two equals four so there you go you Mm -hmm. said there was four people talking in the chat so you had it right yeah oh and trust said he's not a people oh well yeah don't worry about that i i don't doubt that uh, you know who? Whatever happened to sock puppet? Well, okay, guys. Uh oh. Is uh, Flash sounding really weird, or is it just I me mean, that's hearing him really weird? Yeah, uh, she's hearing me really weird. You almost sound like a, a cybernetic uh, Charlie Brown teacher. Wah 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 wah, with the cyber shit going on. 
Yeah, I got your cyber right here. Well, missing. Anyway. Ah, uh, hey, Gribner, be nice. I don't do that to you when you're live. <laughs> You, okay. You bully, meanie Flash, guy. You sound right. fine to everybody else, so it yeah. must be just must be my just internet. Mm. I don't care anyway. What? No, I'm not using voice meter, Rob. I was but just my, see. My internet has been real wonky the last few days. So see what's important. Be... I was just telling her I quit the human race, and she's concerned about her internet service. Proves well, my point. Let me let yeah. me close some tabs. Wow, it really just proves my point. <laughs> and see if maybe I just have entirely too much shit going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be the problem there, Mary. You never know. But uh, you know what? I could I could probably like dive off a building as long as I'm wearing a mask when I hit the ground, so people don't get mad at me. He's not wearing a mask. Splat. <laughs> you know, this is really cool because well, nobody else hears what what I'm hearing, but it's really okay. funny. Why? <laughs> nobody hears what? Because I'm getting like really t- Oh, or, or, you know, why don't and, you? Okay. And why don't, it does. Uh, uh, and so oh, you sound really weird to me. I'm what? just saying. Hang up and call back into the show. I have reconnect. no idea what the hell's going on, but it's reconnect funnier. your um, wire. Hang it up and call back. You know what? No. I'm going to hang up and start over. How That's I brilliant. I thought I'm glad you thought of that. Well, uh, usually it's just a matter of the wire. I don't think that we've ever had to reboot the system live before. Maybe we have. Maybe we haven't. Maybe she is. I'm not sure what's going on right now myself. But this is the dork table. and Mary's going to take some time off. So I don't know. I might take some time off with her and not do a dork table for a little while. We'll see what happens. Couldn't even keep her strapped down to the table on this show. Aha! No, wait. Maybe she did have to reboot. Let me see. Ah! Oh, Cirque's giving me a little slap on the back there. Ah! But Rob says, <clears throat> I sound really weird. <sighs> ah, well. Hmm. I don't know, and I think... Not, there she is. I sound really weird. <laughs> Got it. Ah, ah, well. You're, you're playing something. I don't know, and I think... Oh, thank you. She was playing the sound... While she was on the call. So she'll be calling right back as soon as she sorts through her technical jibberwockies. Wow. Right. <laughs> hey, this is a lot of fun. Okay. Now for a musical interlude while Mary gets her knickers unknotted. Okay, maybe not. Reality, we have. <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? Uh, hmm. Let's see. Let's. Look. I see her still. Lo- um, she's still in the RLM, so she did might not have rebooted her whole entirety, or maybe she is. I have no idea. <laughs> so, what do we got to compl- Oh, yeah, I was complaining about the. Uh, the Danes are going to go all, you have to, okay, I see Mary's BRB right now. Anyway, the Danes are going to go all mask mandatory on us starting next week. So, you know, that just goes to show how this, how do you predict? Well, we, we, we're we all right until Thursday. Thursday, on Thursday, the virus is going to attack in the south, Captain. <laughs> Thursday is mask or nothing. So I can go out in public and take walks and whatnot. Just won't be able to allow to go inside anywhere and actually do any commerce. Uh, hmm. That's going to be an interesting two months. 
So I'm going to call that Thursday is Mass Day. Killing a little time till Miss Mary returns for our epic Dark Table Saga. Oh, <laughs> wow. Not much going on. I mean, the world is it's kind of a dull place when you think about it. But then they got the Internet to keep you excited. Like we got the... <laughs> It got the selection coming up. Ten de- glorious shopping days right now for you to go out there and get your head filled full of details and important facts so that you can go out and vote for either Donald Trump or what's his name to be the president of the United States of America, baby. That's right. What's going on? Hmm. Oh yeah, Mary's Miss Miss Mary is rebooting here. I can read a, a little. I got a link here. I'll just do some reading. Take this dork table to another level. So I'll post me a link here into chat to the chat room for everybody to see. Da-ding. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put it in notes. And then I'll read some of it until Mary gets back because she had to reboot her system. We overloaded poor Miss Mary, <laughs> and now we must pay the fine. So I'm going to read this thing called what is it called? COVID 19 lockdowns are in lockstep with the Great Reset. This is the 23rd of October in 2020. Some site called Activist Post. I wonder if it's any good. I don't know. I'm just going to read it and see. Stall. Stalling. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. In October 2019, a pandemic simulation exercise called Event 201. A collaborative effort between Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security, World Economic Forum, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation concluded that a hypothetical new coronavirus may end up killing at least 65 million people worldwide within 18 months of an outbreak. Do, do, do. <laughs> I'm stall until Mary gets back. <laughs> when COVID-19 coincidentally emerged from Wuhan two months later, scientists were rushing to generate similar alarmist forecasts using a variety of questionable scientific models. Researchers from the Imperial College London Bridge approximated death tolls of 500,000 UK and 2 million USA by October this year. Well, they were close. I mean, if if you consider that that amount of people died of like a lot of other shit. <laughs> they rebranded the freaking flu. <laughs> So, all you lucky people out there that died, the good news is you died of the COVID. The bad news is it was really the flu, but we called it the COVID so that we could juggle some freaking fake money and bullshit the world, I suppose. Because I'm not, I'm not a doctor and all that, and everybody else is going to, oh, you don't know anything. Well, I may not know much, but I know this. I'm still alive, and I don't have any respect for any of these mandates. <clears throat> if I have to, if you're going to force me to comply, then that's one thing. But I'm not going to do it because it's for my own good. I'm pretty convinced that it's <laughs> it's absolutely for my not good. So, back to the epic story of... Oh, this is by Dr. Matthew Maybach. Where did I leave off here? Ah, the death tolls to those following the 
metastasis of the global vaccine mania, the imperial model was predictably, predictably tidied up with the help of Microsoft. While scientific models are admittedly fallible, one would nonetheless be hard-pressed to justify the endless string of contradictions, discrepancies, and willful amnesia in the global pandemic narrative. In fact, one should question whether COVID-19 even deserves the tag of a pandemic. <laughs> Boy, no, it's like I wrote this myself. Boy, no, it's all me. I, they're chattering in the RLM while I stall awaiting the return of my co-hostage visionary, who was having a technical difficulty and had to go away oh, <laughs> to fix it up. Oh. And I was reading it. Boy, I'm telling you, this stuff I'm reading, it sounds like some of the shit that I would write. So, hmm. I didn't know if you guys thought I was just making stuff up as I was going, but this is an actual link. I posted it in Ireland. So, I guess I just continue reading this thing. Stop worrying about Mary. She'll be back when she gets... Okay, I'm worried about Miss Mary. <laughs> She's out there in uh, Kansas with sometimes little to no internet <laughs> surface. It's a miracle she gets on. <laughs> so, where was I? According to the United States Center for Disease Control, CDC, the updated age group survival rates for COVID-19 happen to be ages 0 to 19, 99.997%, 20 to 49, 99.98%, 50 to 69, 99.5%, and 70 plus 94.6%. The mortality rates are only slightly higher than the human toll from seasonal flu and are, in fact, lower than many elements for the same age cohorts. Hmm. Wow. Crack salesman. Wow, smart asses up getting there. No, Rob, I didn't kill Mary. I, I She just got uh, e-wounded. Her computer had a... I don't know, maybe I killed it. <laughs> she, she said I was sounding funny, but... Anyway, where was I in this epic tale of stuff? Oh, yeah. If the CDC statistics don't lie, what kind of science have we been subjected to? Was it the science of mass-mediated hysteria? <laughs> there are other troubling questions yet unanswered. Whatever happened to the theory of bats or <laughs> pangolins being the source of COVID-19? <laughs> Who was patient zero? <laughs> Come on, they've had a year to work on this, you know. So it's to the point that it doesn't matter if it's if it's true or not. It just matters what the government tells certain people to do. And those people, that 20%, give or take, I would say, let's say in some countries it's higher. But just 20% of these, you know, fellow countrymen bopping around, doing their shit, you know, the government-mandated way, will make the other 80% responsible to do the same thing. And I think, uh, I, I could be off on the numbers, but I don't think it's at 20% here at the moment. And I saw quite a few more people. Of course, I'm noticing it more now because you know, now I'm looking for it. They're going, hey, we're going to force you to do this by God. <sighs> One way or another, you're either going to or you're going to slap somebody because they want you to conform. <laughs> I don't know. It's a crazy-ass fucked-up world, that's for sure. 
Uh, we're all, uh, I think we're being pushed to our individual levels of what we'll take. Yeah. And some people's levels of what they'll take is vast and wide. Circle, for example, can deal with it way better than me. <laughs> she smiles through all this shit like it's no big deal. And me, I, I haven't even had to do anything, and I, I complain before. Before it happens, I'm already going, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> and my wife just rolls with this shit, so... Uh, I don't know if it's got something to do with the uh, culture differences. Me being a wild ass American from California and all like that. And Cirque being satisfied with her home country. So it, it sets up things to look different than they truly are. Because she doesn't want to go to the States. <laughs> And I can't, I can't say that uh, anybody in the States in any situation of uh, control has made it a popular place to go to. Well, they've done everything except put up uh, don't feed the bear signs. Yeah. I, mean, I remember when building a wall was the, the big thing to keep the Mexicans out. Now building a wall is how do you keep the people in? Yeah. Remember when... Uh, we were joking about that because we're the conspiracy nuts, right? And we were saying things like, ah, they're not building a wall to keep the wetbacks out. They do all the work. They're doing this. They're building a wall to keep you fuckers in. <laughs> then they found ways to that. They didn't have to do it using a wall. They could do it using uh, group fear, group think, fear mongering, some links, a couple of dishonest doctors, I don't even know if this Fauci guy, what kind of doctor he is. <laughs> a voodoo doctor. He, he, he needs like a witch, uh, one of those like monkey paws or something. Go with his glasses. But I've heard every possible version of the story uh, about this corona crap out of this guy. There is to tell, so. Well... I don't guess Mary's coming back. Maybe we'll just do a, a quick hour and call it a show. I think I killed Mary's computer. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to apologize ahead of time just in case I did. <laughs> but we have no idea what happened to Mary. So I will continue. Yeah, I know, Beetle. Ah, isn't she fun? Anyway. Where was I on this uh, epic saga? Oh, here we go. Why was there a concerted media agit prop against the prophylactic use of hydroxychloroquine that was backed by the Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, no less? And why did Professor Neil Ferguson, who had led Imperial's contagion modeling, repeatedly breach lockdown measures to meet his paramour right after his recommendations were used to justify draconian lockdowns worldwide, with continue, which continue till today? Hmm. Yeah, well... Boy, we got screwed on the dork table here. Uh, who stole? What? I'm trying to read the chat. Uh, <laughs> lost Mary. Oh, well, I used to hitchhike and fall asleep in one state and wake up in a whole other state and have to be told where I was when I got out of the car. What? Where am I? <laughs> Oh, those were the days. Back when uh, people were, I don't know, they weren't terrified of each other yet back in the 70s. That, those are fun times. I can't imagine anybody trying to physically do the things that we did in the 70s growing up. Oh, man. 
what a different world than the one we came from. The one we're in now, this mask and distancing. Oh, wow. <coughs> There's a few of us that see it as a, a distraction from the, the collapse and replacement of the U.S. dollar. But it's not a very popular topic to uh, use <laughs> verbally. It's more like, uh, I don't know, it's like that bomb sitting off somewhere that nobody wants to admit is there. Well, it hasn't blown up yet. Leave it alone. Don't go antagonizing. Don't poke it with nothing stupid. Leave it alone. <laughs> well, apparently this thing is going to blow up all by itself, no matter what any of us do. And it's not so much a matter of, I don't think, people agreeing with it or disagreeing with it. I think it's a, a it's way deeper than that. It's a matter of how much it matters to the individual. You know? Because a lot of us, uh, like, I'm familiar with the black market in the States. <laughs> As a marijuana user, way before the days when marijuana was legal, <laughs> I was... I was still smoking. It didn't didn't stop me. It slowed me down. Of course, it would make it a little bit more difficult. I mean, you can just walk in. You'd have to know certain things about what kind of people smoke. And then out of that kind of people, how many of those deal? <laughs> so I had it kind of figured out. Restaurants and bars were uh, usually where people went and smoked marijuana. And then what really made it all easy was, remember when they started to make us smoke outside? I forget what year that was. Late 90s, I think, something like that. So now they had to bar. Couldn't smoke inside, so you had to go outside. And we all knew each other, and everybody that knew each other that smoked, it was either you did and you, you didn't. It or it didn't bother you that somebody did. So we would be, <laughs> it was easier to do the shit we were already doing because they're stupid smoking outside law. But it, uh, I don't know. I guess it made the, the smoky, you know, took the smoke out of the room, but most of us didn't really give a shit about that in the first place. And all it did was, uh, it just made matters, in, in another way, it just made matters worse. It drove people to doing things that they normally probably wouldn't do. But, hey, they're smoking it. Let me, let me try that. <laughs> I'm going to try this here at Gateway Drug. And if I end up on the streets of New York with a heroin needle in my arm, it's all your fault. <laughs> because that's, that's the TV world we come from. You start out with a marijuana cigarette inside of 20 minutes. You're on a bus headed for New York City so you can become a junkie on the street. I mean, <laughs> this is as bad as the story I was reading. And bad, the story was right. It's that, that this has all happened and we're at this point in history where this is the best we can do. <clears throat> oh, a world of people running around pretending that there is a pandemic that only kills old people, but we're going to control it by making sure that the young people don't give it to the old people. <sighs> yeah. Well, I remember life, I'm going to get off the radio here, but I remember life was so much easier back when we could just decide if we wanted to go outside or not. But I guess, uh, fortunately for me, there's a state to, you know, tell me how to live and what's good for me and what's not good for me. Wow, what's next? They're going to stop me from smoking or, you know, I don't know. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, I'll call this a show and send Grim some notes here. Miss Mary had some computer problems, and she won't be back for a while. 
So I don't even know if uh, I'm going to be wanting to do a, a solo show. I might just take the same amount of time off with Miss Mary and then just return when she gets back after the American holidays. Yeah, Rob, we're excited. I know, but I just don't have five minutes of anything to freaking talk about. You know, that's what I mean is uh, I see this thing as a fraud. I've said it about a billion times. And every day, the system that I live in, the system I left, they make it more real so that they can you know, control us that much easier. Uh, hmm. Scott, if they can, if they gave a shit about our health, I tell you, life wouldn't be the way it is. So hmm. I doubt it's about our health. <laughs> I think it's about something way different than that. I think I've said it and said it and said it and said it and said it. So without somebody here to yak with, it's, it's kind of a, hmm. yeah, it's an uncomfortable spot for me to be in now. So I'm looking for all the buttons to get this thing going so it can stop the radio podcast and restart the other thing. But thanks a lot, everybody that did hang out with me here on this Saturday, the uh, 24th of October in 2020, things got to get better or something. I don't know, but they're not looking very good even even from where I'm looking at right now. I get, I'll get back to you next week and Thursday on the, uh, on the Dropping a Coil show with Larry and Rob. See you later. Bye.